Hey guys, what's up? It's Stephanie and welcome back to my channel. So in the video today, I'm going to be discussing basically what I wish I knew before starting my clinical year, okay? Or what I wish I knew before starting my didactic year or PA program in general, but I would say specifically what I wish I knew before starting my didactic year or my clinical year. Uh, that's going to be the topic. Hopefully this video will be helpful for you guys, okay? So currently I am a second year PA student. I already finished all of my end of rotation exams. So your end of rotation exams are the exams that you take basically like it sounds on your last day of your rotation. For my program, we have eight rotations. Out of the eight rotations, you have seven end of rotation exams. Your eighth one is currently your, your elective. So basically you don't have an exam or end of rotation exam during that time. That's the rotation I'm in right now, so that's why I'm able to make videos for you guys. I have only one exam, but it's an OSCE, it's not an end of rotation exam. So why am I talking about end of rotation exams? End of rotation exams are exams that are written by the NCCPA, so it's basically the Physician Assistant uh, National Board Committee that writes these exams for all PA students and all PA programs all over the U.S. So all the PA students will be taking the same exact exams as, as you. And it's an exam that is 120 questions. You have two hours to complete the exam and you have 15 minute breaks in between that exam. So you take the first 60, you can take a 15 minute, 15 minute break, it's optional. And then you have the second part of your exam. And on your exam, now this depends on your program. For example, my program, 20 of the questions on the exam are basically questions that the National Committee of Physician Assistants are putting in to see if whether they can use for the pants or not, or they're good questions or not. And these 20 questions out of the 120 are not valid. So you don't know which questions these are. So when you're taking the exam, sometimes I'll have questions that I'm like, okay, this question, I don't know what they're asking. So don't worry about it. Sometimes it's those questions that really don't count. And so my, my program will only count the 100 questions and you'll get the grade out of 100. So these exams, I'll be honest with you guys, they're very, uh, they're difficult. Um, if you actually go online and you Google them for every rotation, they'll give you the average, the national average that PA students score on them. And sometimes majority of them are lower than 80. So I've seen some that are like 75, 76. I think the highest one was like 81, that was, was for psychiatry. So you wanna make sure that when you're taking these exams, you're scoring at average or if better, higher than average, definitely not below average. And so the reason why I'm talking about end of rotation exams is that during my didactic year, I struggled a lot, especially my first semester, if you've seen my previous videos. When I started PA school, I had been out of school for two years. Now that's not an excuse at all for my studying habits, but I didn't know how to study in PA school. I was trying to study different ways. I was scrambling. Some of my classmates uh, said that pulling overnighter, over, all-nighters worked for them. I tried all-nighters. It didn't work out for me. And that's how I was. I was back and forth until I finally found what worked for me, studying. So what I would tell myself before I started clinical year and definitely before I started uh, didactic year is to make sure I have a good time management, definitely time management and a good studying schedule to make sure I learn all the information and also not to just memorize and dump, memorize and dump, because all that information you're gonna need during your clinical year. And depending on how well you understood that information or you learned that information, it's gonna help you or not during your clinical year. For example, pharmacology is a huge one. Pharmacology, I always struggled with it. I think the only semester I got an A in pharmacology was during my summer semester and that's because I had, already, I had already been through two semesters of pharmacology and then finally I grasped how I could understand and not only memorize and dump but learn pharmacology the appropriate way. So I finally found that out until my third semester of PA school which was during the summer. But I always struggled with pharmacology. I know definitely during my first semester pharmacology is a blur to me and I'm having to go back and learn all the pharmacology and so you want to make sure that you don't do that. Make sure that you learn the information correctly the first time that you're taking the class. Don't only memorize and dump. Make sure that you're understanding everything, whether it's the pathophysiology of a disease, whether it's the anatomy and physiology of a certain organ or the anatomy of certain muscles or nerves or arteries, etc. You want to make sure that you're learning everything. I took anatomy and physiology for granted, definitely. That was another class I struggled a lot during my didactic year. I took it for granted and now I'm having to go back and relearn everything and it's a struggle. If you get it right the first time, 
and you're actually learning this information, not only memorizing and dumping, it's going to save you a lot of time during your, your clinical year. It's going to help you a lot in pan, on the PANTS exam, and it's going to help you a lot in your clinical rotations. My first clinical rotation, I did my rotation in the emergency room. My preceptor, basically the individual I was rotating with, was an ER physician that had a lot of years of experience. And then on top of that, he, he was the head of all or the majority of the physicians that worked in the ER there. So he was an extremely smart individual. And he really liked questioning you or as other medical students or residents say, pimping you. So he was all about that. He wanted to make sure that before you went into the room, you knew the pathophysiology of the disease. For example, I diagnosed a patient with chlamydia. He wanted me to know the bacteriology of the disease. Is it as a gram negative or gram positive? Where is it found in the body? He wanted me to know the tissues, the anatomy of the uh, vagina, okay? And whether it's uh, squamous, etc. And then on top of that, he wanted me to know the mode of action of the medication I wanted to prescribe to the patient. So, of course, I wanted to prescribe the patient an antibiotic. He wanted me to know the mode of action, what is the class, why am I prescribing this medication. He wanted me to know all of this. And it was my first rotation. I had just been out of my, I just finished my didactic year. And so, class of antibiotics, the mode of action, I didn't learn this until like my first semester of PA school. So, it had already been about a year. And like I said, my first semester of PA school, I struggled a lot. I felt like I didn't learn or grasp as much as I should have. So, of course, I was struggling a lot. I couldn't remember the class of antibiotic. It was really embarrassing. I couldn't remember the mode of action or, or the bacteria that was causing it. I, or basically, what is, is it gram negative or gram positive? I didn't know any of this. And I feel like if I would have had a stronger foundation during my didactic year, because that's basically all didactic here is a PA school. It's a strong foundation, and depending on how strong your foundation is, it's going to tell you how good you're going to do in your clinical years, um, on your end of rotation exams, on your pants exams, etc. And I didn't have a strong foundation. And I have to say that specifically for, for example, my cardio. Cardio, I had my first semester. I was really weak on reading EKGs, on murmurs, etc. And this definitely did not help me out during my clinical year. So this is why I'm making this video for those of you who are about to start PA school, just got accepted into PA school, about to start your clinical years or currently in your didactic years. I definitely recommend that you make sure that you build a strong foundation. Make sure that you learn everything. Don't only memorize and dump, memorize and dump, because it's going to come back and haunt you. It definitely came back and haunted me. My first rotation, I suffered a lot because he put me on every patient I had to see. Um, and sometimes he would only let me see two patients for the rotation because I didn't know the pathophysiology or the mode of action of the medications or the class of medications. And it's really, really embarrassing. I mean, I know I'm a student and I don't know a lot, but still I should have known things like that. And so I definitely struggled with that. And then, for example, during my surgery rotation, which was my third rotation, it's all about anatomy. So you'll have the doctor or the surgeon asking you, what is this nerve? What is this muscle? etc. What is the motive action of this muscle? What does it do? What is this organ? Etc. And I didn't know that either. I was not familiar with my anatomy. And I have to say that I, I did like a week of ENT. It was just about a month ago. So it's already been about a year. And he was doing an endoscope and he was asking me about the tonsils and the muscles and I, I didn't know. And it was something really, really embarrassing. I, I went home that day and I made sure that I, I knew the anatomy of the face, uh, the oral mucosa, etc. And so it was something that re was really, really embarrassing. So you have to make sure that if you can, like I said, build a strong foundation on your pharmacology, on your clinical medicine, on your anatomy physiology, because this is going to help you out. Anatomy is huge on your physical examinations. I'm actually reading this book, which I really, really recommend. It's called Early Diagnosis of the Acute Abdomen. For those of you who are about to start your ER rotation, even family medicine rotation, or your surgery rotation, this is a great book. PAs, we want to make sure that we know how to master the physical exam. And this is a great book. It talks about anatomy and how anatomy is so important on diagnosing the acute abdomen. And by knowing your anatomy when you're palpating the abdominal area or you're percussing or the patient is telling you they have pain in a specific area, just by knowing your anatomy very well, what nerves run through there. If they're having pain, why are they having pain that is being referred to the shoulder? If the area is 
involved with the pancreas, with the spleen, or etc. It's a really good book, and this basically really tells you how important anatomy is in general. So I know for sure I took anatomy for granted, and I wish I wouldn't. I'm having to go back and learn all this. So that's why I say if I, for those of you who are currently in your clinical, your didactic year, the advice I give is make sure that you build a strong foundation in pharmacology, definitely, your clinical medicine, of course, and then your anatomy and physiology also, and your pathophysiology, because pathophysiology can help you understand why the disease is manifesting in a certain way and why the medication you're giving for that patient, you're giving it. What is it going to do? What is it going to do to the pathophysiology, etc.? So it's really, really, really important that you build a strong foundation. So that's basically the advice I give you guys. I wish I had this advice before I started PA school. I know, like I said, my first semester, I struggled a lot. There were certain classes like pharmacology where I was just memorizing and dumping. And now I'm having to go back and learn all of this. And I know some of my classmates that had that really, really strong foundation, they're doing really well during their clinical rotations. They're doing really well on their end of rotation exams, etc. And same thing for clinical year. When you are in your clinical year, make sure that you take advantage of the time that you are in clinic. I wish I would have taken a lot more advantage. I know most of the time I wanted to go home early because I wanted to study for my exam. And now that I've been out of rotation since March, I wish I would have actually taken more advantage of it and not been so eager to leave the clinic. So this is some of the uh, points that I give you guys. Hopefully this will help you guys out. And if you guys have any comments or anything like that, make sure you comment below and I'll talk to you guys later.